This is Seeing Red. Now in our 15th season of bringing you the best in independent Red Bulls news and opinion. Now, here are your hosts, Mark Fishkin and Joe Goldstein. The Red Bulls head to the League's Cup after dismantling Cincinnati 3-1 on Saturday night, running their MLS home league on beaten streak to 12 and giving fans hope that a top four finish is in sight. It's seeing red, the New York soccer roundup. I'm here with Mark Fishkin. Uh, I'm here with Mark Fishkin. It's Mark Fishkin here with Gustavo Guimaraes. How are you, Gustavo? Good morning. How are you, Mark? All good. Thank God. I'm good. And You've got a friend there, I see. Terrific. I have I have a little Ethan here with me. Wonderful, wonderful. Tonight on Seeing Red, we'll go inside the season sweeping win over FCC. We'll give our Bull of the Week. Red has arrived. The Red Bulls have a mascot for the first time ever. We'll talk about it. The transfer window is open. Team can make some news anytime they want. Uh, goalkeeper AJ Marcucci's on the on the move. We have a preview of Saturday's League's Cup opener against TFC. Our chat today is a special one. It's with it's with Red Bulls President and GM Mark DeGrand Prey and your email. So Gustavo, after a month full of draws, uh, the Red Bulls finally get their tenth win of the season in the league after thumping an, an undermanned FCC three to one at Red Bulls and. Three goals, the first, the, fir- the the most number of goals the team has scored since their last win, which was on uh, June 22nd against TFC, but it was the defense that shined. Uh, what do you think overall about a match like this, my friend? Great match, great match. It, it was nice to see some uh, different pieces stepping up. Gengar had a great game. Dylan Nealis really stepped up too. It was it was overall a very solid performance from the whole team, but I I would like to mention these two as uh, 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 two standouts for in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Lewis Morgan had his first multi-goal match for the Red Bulls since his hat trick against Miami earlier in the season. Morgan now has three goals in his last uh, three games after a five-game goal-scoring drought, which is terrific. And Kyle Duncan hits the net for the first time is since 2021 for New York. I mean, a fantastic finish. Um, you know, almost everything went perfectly. Cam Harper, we saw, got a little bit of a ding on his hamstring. Um, but if there's a time to recoup and uh, get healthy again, it's during these League's Cup. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. We have well, a month of our games, and let's see how they uh, recover from all the injuries whoever yep. may possesses it. Emil Forsberg a couple of weeks away from returning to practice. So this is a time for New York. Uh, you know, I, I don't know too many Red Bulls fans that are dreaming, that dream of League's Cup victories. But I, I think for for New York fans, it's um, a signature win against a top team in the East. They swept the season series against Cincinnati. They also have a win against Miami. And after a week, after a month, rather, of kind of playing down to lesser teams, uh, this was a statement win for New York that, yes, they can be counted on missing a few pieces for sure, but they can be counted on to be in the mix down the stretch. If they were able to perform the way they did, especially in the first half against the top team in the Eastern Conference, without Emil Forsberg, I think they can beat anyone. Yeah. Anyone, anytime. It, it's actually, we haven't performed well away in away games, uh, especially against LAFC, if, I, if I, my mind doesn't uh, betray me. It wasn't for, a, it was just for a minor thing. We didn't beat them there too. So I think it's proven we can beat any team in this league, except for Miami on a very good day. Well, I mean, I think you have to root for a monsoon in the fall if, if, it, <laughs> if it winds up that way. Um, as you mentioned, Dylan Nealis was everywhere. I thought Ronald Doncor had easily his best game as a Red Bull. I mean, Cincinnati only took four shots in the game, two on frame, one the, the VAR-aided goal by Corey Baird after it was 3-0 for New York. But, I mean, um, the, the tactics were right. The effort was right. It was superhero night. The the Red Bulls played like like a team full of superheroes, and now they get kind of the, they get to get off the the treadmill of the MLS season. And we'll talk about League's Cup in a, in a few minutes, but it it just seemed like this was the perfect way to finish. And again, twelve of seventeen games played at Red Bull Arena, and not a single loss. And uh, it was so beautiful to see 
the third goal, the collective play, the build up, everything was perfect. That was beautiful, a beautiful thing to see. For me, so far, it's been the goal of the season from uh, for this Red Bulls. Yeah, uh, definitely a, 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 te- a thing of beauty. So that said, uh, you had mentioned some players you feel really strongly about. Do you have a bull of the week? Oh, the bull of the week for me is Lewis Morgan. He's been carrying the attack the whole season, and he is the main guy there. He can't be someone different, even though a lot of players have, did, have uh, stepped up, but he, he, he needs to be to Morgan. Yeah, I, I agree 100% on Morgan with the brace. I think, um, again, Doncor, Nealis uh, also had very strong games, but it's Lewis Morgan for me. So, all right. Um, the, the, the Red Bulls hit this League's Cup break fourth in the East and seventh on the Shield ta- table. I don't think anyone would accuse them of being an elite team in this league, but they're definitely a very good second-tier team that clearly is unbeatable at home. Again, only have lost four matches in 23. Um, and I think the challenge for the nine-match sprint after uh, the League's Cup is going to be tweaking, getting everybody back and healthy. And that's when we're really going to see, hopefully with some added help uh, through the transfer window, that this team is going to really be able to challenge for an Eastern Conference crown. Yes, yes. Um, and the main, the main thing now for, uh, for the Red Bulls, in my opinion, would be uh, getting uh, Emu Forsberg back for the second part of the season. So I think League's Cup comes in a good time for that. Uh, matter and uh, low expectations like it was last year and the the team was able to go uh, further into this tournament Um, but to this year so far I gotta be honest with you I have a little bit of a higher expectation because they have been playing better simple fact compared to uh, 2023. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, I think it's a completely different team from 2023. I think the big question for, for the fans, especially with the transfer window open, and we'll talk about it with Mark de Grand Prix a little bit, is so here you are. You are a top 10 team in MLS. How do you improve the roster? How does the quality get better to climb into that top five to a point where, I mean, Miami's going to be Miami, but at the end of the day, this team has shown that it can beat Cincinnati. Uh, they'll get another crack at Columbus. And, uh, you know, if the weather's right, uh, Miami is a target. So we'll certainly see. But let's turn our attention to Red. This is the Red Bulls' first ever mascot. Um, a lot of fanfare. I thought the, the, the team did a good job introducing Red to Red Bull Arena. All of the local mascots, maybe not all, but most of the local mascots are around. We got to see Mr. Met in a Red Bulls jersey, which was uh, certainly a sight to see. Um, Let's talk about Red for a minute. I mean, I think there's a lot that's been done over the course of this year with kind of some added marketing spend to, you know, make every night a theme night to make uh, the the in-game presentation a little bit more showy. You know, this is a move away from traditional football for sure, but I'm curious what your overall thought is about, uh, you know, a mascot and this mascot. I like it, Mark. I like it, to be honest. Uh, I think it's exciting. Uh, it gives something different for the crowd, especially for the kids. The kids love it. Uh, and I did like, I, I think his sunglasses are so cool. So I loved it. <laughs> I loved everything about it. Uh, he matches the jersey too. He matches the 2024 jersey, and for me, it's it's. I approved it. I'm glad he's not wearing the yellow shirt. That's all I'll say. I don't know <laughs> if he'll wear the yellow shirt if the yellow shirt is worn at home. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of 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 I'm kind of of two minds about it, right? And I, I we we're going to talk about this with with Mark in a few minutes, but. It, it is apparent that the team has gone on in all in on a visit to Red Bull Arena really being an event, a party, uh, a, a show. I think for longtime fans of the team and of the game, uh, there's less of a need for things like this. And perhaps the focus should simply be on the soccer. Um, attendance is up. Right. This this strategy of making every night a theme night 
is working in terms of attracting fans. Being unbeaten at home is attracting fans. Um, and I, I'd like to, to say that kind of the making this a little bit of a show is attracting fans as well. So uh, I, I'm a little more accepting once I saw red, um, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm a, a little bit more of a traditionalist thinking back to a decade ago where the soccer was the star and um, and I'd like to see a focus on that as well. Uh, and maybe that's just, maybe that's just not what pro sports is in 2024. That everything has to be a show. I don't know. Mark, Mark, um, I beg to differ because from where I come from, all the teams do have mascots in the field too. So in Brazil, it's a common thing. It's normal. My team does have it, so I like it. Uh, and since the team is winning, everything goes smoother, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that's that's simple. My question is, I was in Montclair Sunday uh, for the Red Bulls 2 against Orlando City, and I did expect to see him there, but he wasn't there, so it was a letdown for me. It was a big night on Saturday for him. Maybe he needs a little rest. <laughs> he had maybe, a lot of Red Bulls. <laughs> maybe when the heat and humidity combined is uh, over 100 degrees that uh, the, the, the person that makes Red go uh, needs to take a little bit of a break. All right. The transfer window is open. Um, the transfer window opened officially late last week. I think Red Bull fans were hoping to, at the very least, uh, have an announcement of the Frankie Amaya replacement that uh, we have all been expecting, at the very least, from New York. Uh, I, I have to ask, like, is Ronald Encore's play over the last couple of weeks an indication that maybe this is not going to happen? What do, what do you think? I think he's been proving on the field that he they may not need another CDM. But in, for me, as a journalist, as someone that watches the team, it does need, they do need, they do have to bring another experienced one. You can't just be uh, trusting players from the pipeline. We do know the quality of the pipeline, but in this competition, you have to go in to win. And if the idea is only uh, developing players, you're not there to win. You're not there for the right reason. So they do need to step up the front office. I do expect them to sign another uh, CDM as soon as possible. Even though Donko, yes, he's been playing great. I do see he. I do see a lot of qualities, especially with the ball. But I do think, from the physical point of view, he may be a little bit weak and uh, needs to improve in that area. And up front, I mean, again, I, I think. This is not a surprise to anyone that's listened to this show. The team hasn't had a reliable striker, and you can make the argument, well, Morgan is the reliable striker now. But, uh, I mean, frankly, they need they need real talent up top uh, to play off him and uh, uh, make it go. You can't keep, play, you can't keep paying uh, half a million to Corey Burke to keep up to, to come in in the last minutes of a match. No. That's, that's a mistake. We do need another reliable striker someone we haven't had since BWP and uh, the the need is there they can clearly see it yeah for sure well uh if there is an imminent signing you know that seeing red will be there to, to talk about it uh we hope it happens soon all right AJ Marcucci has been loaned out to finish side IF Nistan through the end of the year Marcucci has been with the club since the 2021 Super Draft. He's yet to make his first team appearance. He's appeared 54 times for Red Bulls too. He's played very well against a team that sometimes has been very, very lacking on the back line. And I think the thinking here by Julian de Guzman is this, this kid just has to get some reps and MLS Next Pro just isn't, isn't going to be good enough. Maybe that's a nod to Aiden Stokes. Uh, the young uh, homegrown goalkeeper that he, in fact, is is the goalkeeper of the future. But at, at a time when uh, you know both Cornell and Mara are here, I guess it, I guess the question gets to be asked, uh, begs to be asked: Is does Marcucci actually have a future with this team? He's been here for three years. It, he's yet to make a first team appearance. There's no indication that. I mean, he certainly won't by the end of this year. Uh, is this just now an asset that they're going to be looking to flip eventually? Um, I do see a future for him in this club because we can't, uh, I don't know about what they have in mind about uh, Mira, but I do think he can be a reliable backup there as well. Um, 
it's someone that's been with the club, knows the the knows everybody, knows everything about the club. I, I do like to keep. I would like to keep him in the roster in the future. Well, we'll, we'll certainly see. All right, Saturday. He, he, and let's not forget, he, he saved the penalty there. First game, he saved yes, the penalty. Yes, that's right. His first game with his Finnish team, he saved a penalty in the 94th minute, allowing his team to uh, salvage a point and stay, uh, be in contention uh, for staying up in that league. So well done, AJ. We're, we're rooting for you for sure. All right. Saturday, the great adventure known as the League's Cup gets going. Uh, here's the story about TFC. Uh, they... I want to say they kind of limp into into League's Cup. They've been playing. They've gotten some results of late. The team is 9-14-3. They're eighth in the East, which makes them a playoff team, despite 14 losses on the season, which talks about just how dreadful the bottom half of the East is. They've scored 24 and conceded a dreadful 47 goals in 26 games. These are obviously all MLS stats. They've won just three times away from BMO Field. Um, they don't concede penalties. They are um, t- they are tied for second in the league in fewest penalties conceded. Only the Red Bulls, Philly, Columbus, NYC, and Charlotte have conceded fewer penalties. That said, they do pick up yellow cards and an alarming clip. Only St. Louis has more yellow cards. 66 yellow cards in 26 games for TFC. And important to note that almost 40, a little over 40% of the goals they've conceded happen late because they are a little older and they run out of gas and they don't have uh, a lot of depth on their lineup. We talk about TFC, you know, are they getting back in track after a dismal run of form when they went winless in nine, uh, including the three, nothing defeat at Red Bull arena. They they're slowly turning their fortunes around with two wins out of their last three. They beat the union and rivals CF Montreal at Stad Saputo. Um, with players like Osorio and Richie LaRay are coming back from Copa America. They're, they're kind of re-energizing their lineup. However, um, defending has been a massive problem, right? Only two teams in the East have conceded more, and their back line is very leaky. Their center backs are subpar at the very least. Um, they've, won, they've won two and lost three in their last five MLS games. The wins against TFC and Montreal, as I mentioned, the losses 3-1 to Miami, 4-0 at Columbus, and they lost at home uh, to Orlando with our old friend Derek Etienne getting a goal. Um, 44th all-time meeting between these teams. The Red Bulls lead handily at New York. I mean, that is a completely dominating stat. This, this Toronto team does not travel well. Um, in fact, the Red Bulls are unbeaten in 10 against TFC and have won the last seven games between the two at Red Bull Arena. Earlier this season, of course, it was the Red Bulls uh, on goals by Manuel, Youngar, and Cam Harper um, knocking down TFC 3-0. Their last win before this past week against Cincinnati. BWP, all-time leading with 10, and Lewis Morgan has four. Here's what we might see out of TFC and John Herdman, Sean Johnson in goal. Uh, They play kind of a 3-5 in the back with Richie Larea, who gives them a lot of action on down that left side. Their uh, center backs are Raul Petretta, Kevin Long. No, that's not Aaron Long. And Nic- Nickerson Gomez, a Frenchman. There's Bernadeschi, who was all smiles the other, last night at the uh, MLS skills competition. But nevertheless, nine goals and five assists leads the team. Um, at center mid, it's Osorio back, with, back from Canada. Tw- uh, Debbie Flores, a 28-year-old Honduran. Insigne top left, Derek Etienne on the right, and DeAndre Kerr with six goals and an assist for um, for Toronto. So, sir, you know, New York will obviously want to defend home turf. They will want to come out. Th- this is really the game to see who advances out of this League's Cup group because the other team in the group in Group East 6 – is perennial um, um, Liga MX powerhouse Pachuca. And so in order to get out of this group, you need one win in your two games and you're guaranteed a slot in the in the round of 32. I guess the question is, uh, they didn't see Osorio, they didn't see Larea in late June because those two important players for TFC were with Canada. What, what do you expect to see? I do expect the Red Bulls win. I, I would be... Uh, uh, I don't want to 
uh, I don't want to hide from anyone that I do expect them to win this game against Toronto. Toronto is such a bad team defensively. It's, un it's very unbalanced. They have a good uh, good attack, very important pieces in Signy, Benadeski. But in the back, the back line is atrocious, like you mentioned, not Aaron Long. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to be honest, it's a game to win. You can't say that you're hosting Toronto and you do you 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 have to respect that team. No, you do not have to respect that team. You have to go forward, the score goals, and win. Yeah, I like it. Um, the Red Bulls play Pachuca on Tuesday at Red Bull Arena, and then Toronto plays Pachuca Sunday, August fourth at BMO Field. And again, two of the three teams get out of the group in League's Cup. Uh, we've yet to really hear from the supporters about what they're going to do. There's around the league, there are a number of supporters groups that are boycotting the game, uh, sending a message that they would rather see their teams be playing in the U.S. Open Cup instead of this manufactured championship of League's Cup. And at a time when the Olympic football tournament is just kicking off today, Wednesday, um, this this is their big grab for the summer of soccer. They they've got to to make some noise. I'll be curious as to what we'll see in terms of um, attendance for this tournament, especially for the weeknight game. And um, it'll just be really interesting. Okay, so you, I, I, you're predicting a win for sure. Do you have a score line? Three one. I, I'm going to call it a two nil Red Bull win, which will see New York advance to the round of 32. And it'll be curious to see how New York either rests their players or uh, maybe integrate some more younger players to get them some experience as the team gets to prepare for the stretch run. When we're back on seeing red, very, very happy to have Mark de Grand Prix, the president and GM of the Red Bulls joining us next. Keep it here. We're at the New York Soccer Roundup. Red Bulls finishing their pre-Leagues Cup schedule with a big, emphatic win over FC Cincinnati. Uh, very, very pleased once again to welcome back to the show the president and general manager of your New York Red Bulls, and that's Mark de Grand Pre. Hello, Mark. How are you? Good morning, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? Uh, it's uh, it's great to finish up this kind of phase of the regular season with the win. I think a lot of folks are feeling really good about it. Uh, I think it was a great atmosphere the other night, and uh, I think there's a lot of good feeling around the around the fan base. And so we're we're eager to ask you a few questions. And again, thank you for the uh, opportunity to stop and by and talk with us. Um, no great. All right, let's begin. Um, reported attendance is up this year. Uh, you guys have clearly invested significantly in marketing this year, doing some new, cool, and different things. Every night is a theme night. Um, can you talk to us in general about what's happened in terms of getting people into Red Bull Arena this year? I think it's been uh, an interesting start to the season from our home opener to now. Um, you've seen a big change in the match day presentation. We've put a lot of emphasis on making sure that it's a it, it's an event around 90 minutes of great soccer, hopefully. So that's why you see the theme nights that are pretty consistent. Um, and also we've we've readjusted our marketing initiatives, our digital marketing, uh, and we've seen an uptake of about 11 percent or so. I don't know. After last match, it's probably higher in our attendance. And it's really paying off, I think, driving that atmosphere, the experience. And if you obviously you were there Saturday, I assume you saw what we did with the announcement of the mascot with yep. Marvel and Superheroes Night. That's the type of energy we want in the building every game, and we're still striving to get there. Would you say, looking back from where this team was the the last time they were truly contending for MLS Cup, it seemed like the soccer kind of was enough to drive excitement and. I appreciate that it's a different world and I appreciate it's a post COVID world, but do you feel that in, in stadium hosts and um, it, theme nights, many geared towards kids and uh, a very impressive mascot uh, clearly aimed at kids. Is, is it really a, a focus away from a more traditional soccer experience? 
I think the focus is to continue to grow the support and the love for the game of soccer. And if that enables us to get more fans in the building and more kids engage with the game, uh, and then our team delivers on the pitch like they did Saturday, it's a win-win for us. So I think it's a, a mix of both, Mark. It's trying to make sure we can attract new fans who may be casual sports fans or more used to that event atmosphere at an NBA game. Uh, and we want to bring some of that here so we can bring them in the building. They enjoy it. And then they see great soccer and then it's a win-win and they come back. Um, yes. You guys ran a number of, uh, you've run a number of flash sales this mm -hmm. season, which we we've also a new tactic themed along with the, with the season long home unbeaten streak, which is obviously phenomenal. Um, how, how were those, how successful were those? And can we expect more of those for the rest of the season? Yeah, they were successful. And our objective here is to drive sort of a, synergistic initiative around opportunities that arise like obviously the own unbeaten streak drove the initial uh, flash sale and then we're going to see it continue in moments and times around the rest of the season because it's driving new fans to come in which is important as we tra track that metric when these folks are buying it's new fans and hopefully we get them to come back and we re-engage them so it's worked out okay for us yeah in speaking about new fans and speaking and focus on new fans, perhaps more mm -hmm. than returning fans. And I'm not saying one's more important than the other, but this mm -hmm. is what we're talking about. You yep. guys made some news recently about um, a physical change to Red Bull Arena, where you're going to be moving the the press box elsewhere in the stadium and and kind of having really the best seats in the house as they've been for the first 15 years of the arena, uh, you know, for the for the press and you're going to turn this into an ultra premium experience um there's another side of that though which is a change in the benefits to current red members that some of them are not going to have access to uh, the audi club anymore and for many of them losing that access has been really upsetting um can you talk about the focus on the ultra ultra high end luxury new fan more of an coming for an experience rather perhaps than of a hardcore fan of the team and maybe a focus on catering to them versus long time season ticket holders that are losing a really treasured benefit. Yeah, that's a great question. I just want to make sure it's clear for everyone. The Audi club access does not change for anyone. That is not changing. Anyone who has Audi club seats, they, they have Audi club access nothing's changing there what is changing is our bulls corner pub we're repurposing it to be um a a high-end fnb experience for those who buy the box seats and they have their own seating assignment there so there's never concerns there um and the beauty of what we've done mark as we've rolled it out to our current members we've almost sold 50 percent of the seats to current members who've upgraded to those okay. seats. So that's gone out well. And there's no doubt there's some folks who are not happy. I met with some of them Saturday night during the match. Um, but ultimately, this enables us to increase the amount of inventory we have for premium seats, which drives revenue ultimately. Like we have the, we're, I think, the third lowest um, premium inventory across MLS stadiums. So we have about 4% of our inventory that is premium seats. And you've seen the buildings around New York, what they offer in terms of experience. So for us to stay competitive in the marketplace, we've got to start reimagining the arena. This was step one. Uh, and we will make sure that those who will not have access to the Bulls Corner Pub are taken care of. And eventually we may find or develop a new area for them to have access to. Uh, that's exclusive to them uh, for our home matches. So this is step one of a multi-pronged process here that starts this year in the off season and will continue over the next two to three years to really imagine, reimagine the building. Can you tease a little bit of what's to come? I wish I could, but there's nothing that uh, is sort of finalized and set in stone yet. So there's, I can say that there's going to be more communal spaces, group areas. Right now we don't have a large enough space where we can host a group of four or 500 folks who come in if it's right. a corporate group. So we've got to develop that within the bowl and obviously within the arena footprint. So those things are going to happen and you're probably going to see more of those and maybe some uh, new standing room areas around the building also uh, that we can then flex up and down for international matches or MLS matches. Ultimately. That's a good segue. Um, 
you know, the, the, the core part of the summer of soccer has just kind of come to an end, right? Euros over, Copa's over, the Olympics are about to start, League's Cup is about to start. Um, among the major tournaments, I mean, you had a, you had a Copa America semi six miles from Red Bull Arena um, in a sold out MetLife Stadium. How, how can you, with the notion that we're two years away from 2026, how can these big international tournaments be a driver of your success? Um, given the fact that there's, there's still, you know, room every week. Yes. I mean, I've never seen so much soccer or so much energy around soccer this summer between the Euros, Copa. Now we're leading into League's Cup, our regular season match, and everything else that's happening in the marketplace with international soccer matches or club teams from around the world coming in this summer. So the energy in the marketplace is amazing. We've leveraged it to some extent this season, uh, working with MetLife to uh, partner with groups who would buy our games would get access to pre-sales at MetLife or access to tickets at MetLife. Uh, and we're going to continue to do that as we build up towards, obviously, the big moment, the Club World Cup next summer, mm -hmm. and then following that, the, the World Cup. Uh, and we will play a major part in the Club World Cup, hopefully, and, and be a whole site. We're working on those things right now, That's, ultimately. Yep. And then the World Cup will obviously, we're part of the bid committee. We believe that our new training facility uh, will be a training site. So we're going to leverage those things as best as we can. And I think part of the success we're seeing with our attendance growth comes from the energy we're seeing around soccer. And some of those folks who've been to the Argentina match or have never been to our arena still want to see more soccer coming into the arena or coming to our arena first, then going to those matches. So I think it's the energy is building in the right direction for us to hopefully leverage that uh, at a much higher clip in the coming years. Are you seeing a lot of interest for League's Cup uh, coming up? I mean, it's year two of the tournament. That I think there's still a lot of education among the more casual fans as to what this is. Um, were, were you guys bummed not to be able to participate in the Open Cup with your first team this year? Because it seemed as if that, that's been kind of a, of a trade-off as that tournament gets uh, you know, into the semifinals. I'm just kind of curious your thoughts. So in terms of League's Cup, I think you said it right, Mark. The the awareness, the education of what it is, it's still we still have to educate our, our current fans that we're taking a little break. We're playing matches for League's Cup. So there's a lot of education, awareness building that needs to continue to happen. Um, the attendance, maybe we'll see an uptick versus last year, but it's been it's it's a difficult one, let's be honest. But we'll keep working hard at it. In terms of the U.S. Open Cup, as you saw, the decisions that were made for the teams that participated and didn't participate. Yeah, I think ultimately we all want to participate for a championship, right, and win a trophy. So um, it's something that we're we're processing, and we 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 work with the league to make it work for everyone. Uh, ultimately, so hopefully we'll see where that goes next season. But we'd love to be able to participate eventually. You had mentioned the Morris Township uh, training complex. We've seen some lovely drone shots of land being cleared. Um, I, I get a sense this is maybe moving perhaps a little slower than you guys had originally um, planned for. But I mean that this is construction in, the, in this part of the country. Are, are you going to be able to move in next year to this uh, complex? Yeah, according to we're on plan right now. We were supposed to start moving dirt mid year this year. We'll start construction for our pitches at some point uh, in the next few months, hopefully. And the goal is still to be in the building by late fall 2025. So um, we've got a very tight schedule, but everything has been going according to the current schedule. So hopefully we'll be there by the fall 2025. There's some question about what happens uh, at, at Hanover when you guys are gone. Is is this going? Is the the current complex going to be raised? Are you, is it going to be? Are you just moving out? Thanks for everything. I'm just kind of curious what's going to happen there. So we're in a lease currently with the landowners. So our lease will uh, we extended it till 2026 in case we we have yes. some delays. Obviously, just to be prudent. Yeah. Um, and after that, I'm not sure what they're doing with the lease. They have plans. I think they've already signed an agreement with a future tenant, but we're not aware of who and what it may be. Okay, cool. Um, how are renewals going? I mean, it's it's renewal season. Obviously, the 
the uh, Bulls Corner Pub, as you as you mentioned uh, correctly, thank you. That um, some some season ticket holders will will lose access to that. I'm curious how renewals are tracking, perhaps in comparison to previous years. It's if- uh, we're ahead of where we were last year, and last year was a record year for us. So I think we're we're looking forward to a really strong renewal season campaign, and then obviously adding new members as the uh, season progresses here. But it started off very well. Um, I want I want to turn the attention to what's happening on the field, and I know that that is Jokin's purview. Um, the transfer window is open. We spoke with Julian a couple of weeks ago. He uh, thankfully had the opportunity to speak with him. He shared that a, a Maya replacement was coming. Um, I, I think before the season, if you'd said that the team would be fourth in the East. Uh, most people after the last few years would kind of say, well, that's pretty good. I, I think the the notion in a world where everyone perhaps is chasing Miami right now, LAFC being very aggressive, uh, Olivier Giroud, um, Marco Royce coming apparently to LA Galaxy. You guys made your, your splash signing in the offseason after saying that uh, the team would be investing more in the, in the roster with ML Forsberg. Unfortunately, he's not, you know, he's missed a, a bunch of games. The sentiment, I think, among the fan base is the team is okay and perhaps closer to the standard that the team has had, certainly in the in the shield era for the team. But yet, I think it's not controversial to say that this team on the field is not currently a contender to win. And not saying they can't be, but just based on talent, what we've seen. I know they're obviously hard to beat, very few losses in the league, unbeaten at home. I guess the question is, uh, you know, can Red Bull fans anticipate a significant um, roster upgrade and push to be considered uh, moving from kind of a tier two solid team, tough to tough to win in their place to a real cup contender for this season? It's a fair question from everyone, obviously. I think everyone in our organization is absolutely working hard and committed to make sure we deliver the best possible product for our fans and to compete for an MLS Cup. We only have four losses. We're unbeaten at home. I think we have a great core of players, and certainly we're all uh, working as hard as we can to hopefully bring support into the team, but everyone is committed Julian, Jokin, everyone on the sporting side, the front office is aligned that if we can make moves to improve the roster, we will. Uh, so they are absolutely fully committed. We are committed and everyone's going to make sure that we provide them the resources they need to go and make that happen. Right now, we feel really good about the roster. They're strong, they're competitive, and we've had a tough stretch here. We started off a really strong schedule also. Yes, agreed. And, and we managed that very well. And hopefully Emil will come back. We have Peter. Hopefully will come back healthy, Serge. Um, and obviously maybe there'll be some additions through this window here. And uh, I think we'll be in a really great spot and our fans will be excited about what's to come for the rest of the season. Um, what's your thoughts on Jokin so far? You've been working with him for a little over a year. How is that partnership going? Amazing. He's a great guy. He's Obviously, he's got great global experience with the game. He's a really great teammate, good communicator, really engaged and committed to seeing us succeed and, and being a great partner. And it's been great for the organization from Yoke and Julian's been an amazing addition. Sandro's been a great addition to the club, his energy, the way he leads the team and the way he he's inclusive of the entire organization. I think everyone can feel it in our community and our fans. So it's been nothing but great stuff happening for the last few years, building to where we are now. I, I, I think the sense is though, it's not a completed project yet. I mean, obviously certainly an upgrade over the past year for sure. uh, Mm -hmm. And the results would, would bear that out. But um, again, I, I think, it's not controversial to say that that the team is not a, a top contender or considered a top contender. Um, I think we all are really hoping that the club will make that happen and uh, invest to, to deliver for the team. One last question. Uh, th- and again, thank you for your time. I know how busy no you problem. are. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, the, the, just the eternal question, as you said, you've, you've generated a lot of new fans, uh, red memberships, renewals are, 
ahead of last year. Um, the team continues to sit tw- in the bottom third of attendance in the league. You've made the, I, I think, a, a really smart decision to kind of tarp off the the top um rows of each of the section pushing everyone a little closer to the field uh you know what 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 other tools in the in the box do you have to get uh, perhaps a little closer to the league average which you know i think is uh, about 23 and change at this point yeah so i think we're going to continue to fight in our market being the most competitive market yeah. i'm really proud of where the team has has pushed us to be this year we're going to continue to grow next year we're going to have more ambitious goals and I think we'll uh, get to the mid pack. And as we reimagine the arena and we start renovating it, uh, I think you'll see our average go up consistently because we're gonna be providing a, a better uh, experience. Every seat is great in the arena. We just need to provide better uh, food and beverage experience across the arena, new experiences for groups, as I talked about. When it comes to groups, we're in the top 10 in the league in terms of delivering groups for a game. Our renewal rates are very high. Um, so we've we've done some great stuff. We're going to continue to build on it. And I'm confident that we're going to continue to see more fans in the building. The energy Saturday was awesome. Uh, and it's only going to get better. Mark de Grand Prix is the president and general manager of the New York Red Bulls. Mark, we, uh, we always appreciate uh, when you make time for us. Thank you. And uh, we hope to talk to you uh, along the way here. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you. All right, we've got more Seeing Red coming up after this short break. Keep it here. We're back on Seeing Red, the New York Soccer Roundup. Please know, as always, to write the show at seeingredny at gmail.com. We've got two emails this week. This one from a friend of the show, Paul Fleck, who says, Hi, guys. Hope all is well and good vibes are going out to Joe. Yes, as always. Am I the only one excited for League's Cup? No, don't worry. I don't give a lick about the games, but I'm hoping it's coming exactly at the right time for this group to get healthy for the stretch run. Whether it's players coming back from international duty, an injury, or a new signing joining the fold, it seems the timing should line up favorably to hit the ground running, pun intended, next month. Also, I know a popular choice for uh, Bull of the Week is Lewis with the brace, but did man, did Ronald Donkor have a night against Cincy? He was much better in possession. Multiple line-breaking passes was key on the third goal buildup. Had blocks all over the field, including that one in the box late. And just seemed to force in Wobo, Wobodo uh, into receiving deep and under pressure the whole game. Easily had his best game with us and maybe a reason to have some faith for the plan for that 6-8 roll. What do you guys think? Happy League's Cup break and New York is red. That's Paul Fleck. So uh, w- where would you like to start, sir? League's Cup in general or uh, or praise for Doncor, which we've already delivered tonight? Mr. Paul Fleck, I'm with you. I'm excited for League's Cup and every tournament the Red Bulls are in, I do expect them to win. I, and I always like to see the bottle half full instead of half, half empty. Yeah. Uh, you know, Messi won't play in this tournament. And, Even better. And he was so much a part, right? He arrived just at the start of League's Cup. If you recall last year, his amazing last-minute free kick against Cruz Azul kicked it off and their uh, their whole run to that tournament. So uh, I think it's safe to say, at least from the MLS side, that you know the, the, the tournament's up for grabs. I think the Liga MX side's I think they've made some accommodations of travel for the teams, at the very least for the top teams, that they won't necessarily have to be ping-ponging all around the country, that they can uh, have uh, kind of a, uh, a home market where they can play the majority of their games to the tournament. So it, it'll be, certainly be easy to see. And again, Paul, thank you. Yes, we've, we've sung um, Don Kors praises in this match. Our second email is from Nick Orino, who says, Hey, Mark and Mark. <laughs> Nick is not actually conversing with Mark de Grand Prix, but nevertheless, thank you for writing, Nick. Prior to the season, there was a promise of significant investment in the roster. While many, myself included, would argue that the addition of Forsberg was significant in its own right, I think I speak for most Rebel fans saying that we're hoping for, and quite frankly, expecting more. We've had a great start to the season, but injuries have left a lack of depth, which has held back our potential. The departure of Frankie Amaya left a big hole that I... Hope you can provide clarity on how we feel. Understanding the team wants to continue to develop young talent. If so, we have an opportunity to make a run of trophies this season, which would require some proven 
uh, veteran pedigree entering the roster during the window, mainly in the midfield and attacking positions. Um, we discussed adding to the roster with, with Mark de Grand Prix. Um, you know, there's so much investment going on in the team right now, whether it's changes to Red Bull Arena, whether it's building a brand new training complex, whether it's moving into the top third of the league spenders by getting $6 million ML Forsberg to the roster. And, you know, until the Red Bulls win the last game of the season, they'll want more. And especially in a league that's adding Olivier Giroud and Marco Royce and has, uh, you know, every 35 plus older RG uh, Barcelona 2015 player playing with Miami. And so, um, you know, what do you see, my friend? I think the voice from the people is the voice of God. <laughs> I gotta be honest. We do need to invest, especially in the striker area, the forward the attacks, the attacking area. Uh, yes, they do invest a lot of in this team in infrastructure. The the next uh, facility, practice facility, is being built as we speak as well. So it's nice to see that commitment for the years to come. Uh, the, I'm assuming the Red Bulls are here to stay for a long time. And but yes, what makes exciting is winning on the field and not drawings at home and zero zero or one one and a late mistake from a center back we do need to uh, uh, see commitment uh, when it comes to spending the red bulls are one of the lowest teams in payroll as you mentioned it uh, they were until they signed forsberg forsberg right. is a nice piece yes but i think we do have another uh, dp spot open so let's go let's go get it yeah, and of course, you see the league has added an additional DP slot, right? Starting with this window. This summer transfer window. That's right. So the Red Bulls have basically two open spots that they can go uh, and spend. And, and yes, it's important to note that um, Lewis Morgan is not a DP currently. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what they do there. Um, we've come to an end of a fantastic seeing red. Obviously, want to thank Mark de Grand Prix for stopping by and sharing his thoughts, taking our questions. Uh, everyone that wrote in, Zach Feldman for stats. Um, Joe Goldstein, we're thinking about you every single day, and we're sending you healthy vibes. Gustavo, your prediction for Saturday night? 3-1 Red Bulls, and sending all my love to Joe as well. Yes. Uh, we won't be back before the Pachuca match, but nevertheless, uh, we hope you enjoy Saturday and Tuesday at home. Um, and thank you so much for watching, everyone. Episode 582 of Seeing Red. We'll talk to you soon.